say about 16 years ago, I was bitten by a radioactive tattoo machine. <laughs> and um, after about five nights of sleep, I woke up and I was dope. Where you came from? Like how you started? I came from the streets. No. <laughs> came from the streets. <laughs> oh boy, the real one or the PG one? I give two different ones. It depends on who I'm talking to. My origin story was I was going to college and uh, I think it was like at a party really late at night. I was complaining about going to class the next day. And my friend was like, Laura, just drop out of school. I lived in Oneonta, New York at the college up there, Oneonta campus. I lived in the dorm. I tattooed for food before the RA. It's like, Josh, man, we like you. But you gotta go to class where they're like they're gonna kick you out. I, go, I don't go to school here. I go, my buddy's got a girlfriend, he stays at her house, I'm crashing the bed. They're like, you don't attend? I go, no, they're like, you've been here the entire year. I go, yeah, hey, it's been a blast. I was working in New York City as a dominatrix, and one of the girls at the dungeon house that I was working at actually had left to start tattooing, and she was an artist as well. So I was like, that's really cool. Like, you know, I had been told by my art mentors that tattooing wasn't real fine art. It never would be. So I never really pursued it as an artist. Um, but seeing that another fine artist went and pursued it made me want to. So pretty much I just got one of my s to buy me like all my first set of gear. And from there I just started tattooing and I haven't stopped. I got into tattooing because I was a graffiti writer kid that like I wasn't gonna get I've a real seen it. job. It's Come good, on. yeah. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No way. Whoa. Yeah. I went to high school for, that was like a art high school. And they said in order to graduate, you need to have like, you need to go to college or have something lined up. And I didn't even take my SATs because I was like this stupid punk rock kid. And they were like, well, you have to do something. Otherwise, we're not going to let you graduate. So I was like, I'm going to tattoo. And then they said, OK, we'll go get a job. So I went that night and I got an apprenticeship. I brought a portfolio into a street shop. That was it? That's it. I, uh, I had to suck a dick to get my apprenticeship. <laughs> like, literally. You too? When I went in, I was like, yo, I'm interested in being an apprentice. Let me know all the information. He goes over and he's like, I have a spot opening up in February. Do you want to take it? So I was like, yeah. He obviously never thought anything about it again, because when I showed up on February the 1st, all ready to go, he's like, oh, hey, Oba. I'm like. What's up? You ready to start? He's like, so I didn't think you were going to come, so I gave it to someone else. But I'll take both of you guys in. So he introduced me to the guy, and about two weeks into it, like we started to draw, and the guy could see what I could do and what he could do. Come to find out, his girlfriend was actually drawing all of his drawings for him. So my dad had a shop. I I basically grew up in tattooing. I remember coming home from a church trip and like a camping trip. That was a fun one, a camping trip where I pulled a knife on a kid because he was f***ing with me. Actually, no, he pulled a knife on me and I told him, do it, bitch! I thought I was all kinds of tough because we was in church. I'm like, he ain't gonna stab me. Got home from this wacky ass f***ing church camping trip. My mom's on the kitchen counter, butt in the air, getting this f***ing bear from a flash sheet. And uh, I was young from, from my dad on the kitchen counter. I, I'd been getting dropped off at the, at the tattoo shop after school because we didn't live in the district for the school my parents wanted me to go to. So they pretended that I lived at the tattoo shop. So they would drop me off at the tattoo shop every day and I would just do my homework and sit there and like, I was fucking obsessed. I took the $100 I had to my name and ordered like a tattoo kit off of eBay. I literally had to use my mom's credit card and I gave her, she was all for it for some reason. She was wildly supportive of her child tattooing in her basement, I don't really know why. And then I actually, I tattooed my brother, I tattooed myself, I tattooed like a few people. And then I actually, I think I tattooed like a relatively wildly underage person and his mom found out. And then I got like a cease and desist letter in the mails. And they were like, hey, it's fine. This was a while ago, I think. I know. <laughs> But when I was like 15, um, you know, this I met this dude and he just got out of jail and he was like, Jade, you know, I could put like this f***ing machine together with like a pen and a toothbrush like the best and shit. a motor from like a Walkman, which don't even exist anymore. And I was like, f*** it, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, let's tattoo all the underage children who can't get tattooed. <laughs> And so I just started tattooing the whole neighborhood, you know what I mean? And I walked into like 40 shops, dude. And all the guys were like, oh yeah, f you. Yeah, and I was like, okay. That's what they told <laughs> this me. Is, yeah, this is gonna be harder than it looks. And you know, you just like keep going. Pretty boy Mike over here trying to be a tattoo artist. <laughs> I would've said the same shit. Man, go be a model or some shit. 
I grew up in Hawaii. Everybody has tattoos there. My dad got like this big ass tiger piece when I was like nine. Like he, his whole back is a tiger and I watched him kind of get it all done and I like watched the artist work. The artist was one of his friends, one of the artists who worked on it. And he ended up being really kind to me and like inspiring me in all these ways. And I was like, oh my God, I wanna be a tattoo artist. Like, this is so cool. I love this. I started in uh, Key West. I moved down there actually to work for Jimmy Buffett, doing artwork for him and graphic design and stuff. And my roommates were tattoo artists. So I was just hanging out with them all the time, drawing tattoos for my friends. And next thing I know, uh, they asked me if I wanna learn how to tattoo and just ended up tattooing down there. I was like really young when I started like thinking tattoos were cool. And then I was 13 or 14 and I tattooed myself. And then I got an apprenticeship and that whole thing. And I had two arms at that point. Um, and I was right-handed. So I was like 18 tattooing, doing like moderately all right. And then when I turned 19, um, I got into an accident and lost my dominant arm. So then like I went to a vocational therapist and they were like, oh, you know, if, if you're not ambidextrous, you'll never be ambidextrous so you can't tattoo ever again. And I was like, ah, f you, I'm gonna tattoo. I had to learn how to tattoo with my non-dominant hand at the age of 19. I'm 24 now, so I've been tattooing left-handed for five years. I was tattooing right-handed for like a year and a half, two years. But honestly though, like now, it's like the best thing that ever happened to me because I get to do what I do now and, and people know me for that. Um, and I think my tattoos are better now because it's like, I care about it more than anything. I'm the only person that's ever learned how to tattoo with their non-dominant hand. like. So I, I think that's kind of cool. But I mean, I don't know, it sounds as, cool, as like cheesy as it sounds, like if you love something enough, you're gonna fucking do it. You know what I mean? Like if, if you wanna be an astronaut that bad, you fucking will be, you know? And I, I wanna do tattoos. So when they were like, you can't, I was like, well, well, I'll figure it out. I went to school at art school and then after school, there's no way to get a job. So I was talking to my friends and then they said, hey, you know how to draw, so why don't you be a tattoo artist? First time I say no because it's really against my culture, how I grew up. I was born and raised in South Korea and then tattooing in Korea is really forbidden. Uh, it's illegal to do it, so you go to jail if you want to be a tattoo artist. I had to disconnect with some of my family and friends as well because now they see me as a gangster. After college, I tried to find an apprenticeship, but as it turns out, uh, when you uh, act and talk like I do, people don't want to be around you very much. I so it was it was hard finding an apprenticeship, and so I finally gave up, and um, I was focusing on my on my comic book career, and I went to go get tattooed, um, and they saw my sketchbook that I had with me, and I had mentioned that I wanted an apprenticeship, and next week they called me and asked if I wanted to come in for an apprenticeship, and that was the end of my comic book career and the beginning of, of my tattoo career. So I really, I stumbled into it by giving up. I was drawing on notebooks, jeans, and graffiti on the wall. So when mm. I was like, you can put that on your skin? Like, what? Like, you know, so I begged my mom, she said, mom, can you keep me a, I mean, a tattoo magazine? And I came from a weird spot where it wasn't allowed. Well, I'm not gonna say it wasn't allowed. It was never heard of as a black tattoo artist. Like, this wasn't, it, uh, come on. It was a biker thing, underground. It was Hells Angels on the population. The, like, it was it was that big, you know? So my mom's had a deal, you know what I'm saying? You bring me home A's and B's and I get you tattoo equipment. And I was in school like a nerd. <laughs> yes, yes, I got an A, thank you. Ma, look, there you go. She was like, okay, that's what you want. My mom's was smart. She was yeah. like, you bring me home A's and B's, I'll buy you tattoo equipment. But her deal was, I'm bringing her home A's and B's, college doors will open up. Mm. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna study nursing. I don't know anything about the body. Let me go ahead and take that. So I took that up for two years. So when I went in my college dorm, I had it mapped out. I would tattoo for oodles and noodles, but toilet paper and shit like that. Mm. My room was like a full on shop, bro. Like I had professors coming in, pooch, I want this, you know. So that's how I got my skills on learning the skin. And then after college, I went and traveled the world. I hit Massachusetts, I met Evan. I've been yeah. knowing Evan now for what? 15 years? Yeah, bro. Like, I, I've been tattooing 16 years. Yeah, I've probably known you forever. since a year after I started. I was hitting places that you would never see a black person at. Like, honestly, like, I, 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 we, we can't tell <laughs> together in Maine, remember yeah, that? In Maine, in Maine like 12 everybody years Everybody was like, who the f is this dude? And I set up at, at, little last I, convention, 20 booths maybe. Hell's booths. Angels everywhere, bikers, it was crazy. Yep. But in my mindset, it was like, if I can change their mind all through my artwork and not look at my skin color, it'll work. And it worked. 